Hey guys, so after the last video, my theory, I read all the comments and I realized I screwed up. I really did. I didn't have a mic! I got one! Woo! It's like a, yeah, it's like a wire. Did you partake in any illegal activities recently? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, this is 2 Dim, and I'm Vicolus, your host. We are going to be talking about the responses of the thing theory that I posted a few months ago. Yeah, I know, it's been a minute. That video did way better than I anticipated, about like almost 200,000 views and a ton of comments. Yes, I get it. My theory is very polarizing. You can tell by the comments. You have like one half that's like, you know, I never thought about it. This seems plausible. And you have the other half like, wrong. With like no argument to follow, just wrong. This guy's full of He don't know what he's talking about. And I get it, I do. It's a very old movie, 41 years old, and a lot of people had already made up their mind on the ending and who is the thing. And because they came up with it themselves, they're very passionate about it, which I love. The, the thing is a great movie and I love the community behind it. And I knew it was gonna be a very controversial theory. And I apologize for that. But here we get to the point, the, the meat and potatoes of this video. Y'all are still wrong, or at least half of y'all are. But with 200,000 views, it's still only like, what, 33.6 thousand watch hours, which means a lot of the people that watch my video aren't watching the whole thing. In fact, I think the watch time average was like 10 minutes into my 30 minute video. And I'm assuming just based off of conjecture here that the people who are watching it for just 10 minutes are the same people saying I'm wrong. They're just completely dismissing my theory entirely. I, I get it, I get it, all right? I have some holes, of course, but all things, all theories with the thing have holes. But still, thank you for 200,000 views. You got me over a thousand subscribers. They, they love me, man. They love me, they love me. But I made the video because a lot of theories out there are basically why Childs is the thing, why Childs isn't the thing, why they're both human. I try to look up any reference video for why McCready could possibly be the thing or reasons to support that idea and there really isn't anything out there. So I figured I would make a reference video for people who do believe that so they can show new watchers or newcomers or old comers the whole idea and have kind of a video with all of the proofs that I have and data and analyzation that I did. So you're welcome. But I do truly personally believe that McCready is the thing and I will only not believe that when the new movie comes out. So with that, let's get to the video. Post-production Victor, drop the title card. You feel it? Yeah. Like that? That's right. I figured the series had some potential, so I gave it a name. Horror takes, original, creative. I know you love it. Anyway, let me preface with this. A lot of y'all's debunks to my theory is basically nothing more than a mumbo jumbo. A lot of people try to get into the nitty gritty of the scientific conclusions of a creature we literally know nothing about. And it's cool, I get it, but I think you're thinking too deep into this. A lot of my proofs and a lot of my analyzation is based off on-screen things. On-screen presence, on-screen things that are said. And let's just dive into the easy points. I will do this in sections to make this as comprehensive as possible. Starting with the speed run chapter. I'm just gonna go over the quick comments that I thought were funny and the quick ones that I can answer really fast. This person mentioned that the computer couldn't cheat at chess because they weren't able to. For one, this is a movie. And for two, I'm a horror fan, not a computer fan. I have no clue, you could be right for all I know, but it is a movie and anything could be possible. For all we know, they didn't show the bottom of the computer so it could have shoes. And you can't prove that wrong. It's a movie! Uh, this guy did not see the movie, but agrees. Thank you. This guy says that my content is too slow. Well, I mean, these people say otherwise, but I, I get it. Short form media is a disease that's plaguing our society, and a lot of people like watching TikToks and YouTube shorts and reels because their attention span can barely stay attentive for more than six seconds, or a minute with like shorts and reels and stuff. I get it, cool. Short for media has a place. Being ha being a person of, of, of the workforce and having a job, my breaks are short form breaks. So I can only watch short form media during these times. But I can also go out of my way and watch a full 30 minute to an hour video. And my content is probably going to be 30 minutes to an hour. That being said, if you can't hang, go back to shorts. And this video is gonna be a long one. So get your popcorn, get your Slim Jim. Let's get into it. This guy says, that's a good child. Yes, it is. 
my favorite. This comment brought up a really good point that alcohol in itself is a disinfectant. This is correct, but only if it is 70% alcohol, which is 140 proof for you alcoholic layman. So drinking. Which, believe it or not, J and B is only 40% alcohol. I, I have the bottle right here. And that is just, what, 80 proof? It's not gonna kill any germs, my guy. And while we're on the subject of killing germs and killing the thing cells, let's remember, they actually burnt the thing in the Norwegian camp. Whatever it is, they burn it up in a hurry. And it still managed to survive after it thawed out. Yeah, I said thawed, not de-thawed. That was my bad on the last video. Smirnoff was the other alcohol that was used. Smirnoff was... Um, what was the percentage of Smirnoff? Same as J&B. Same, same as J&B? Mm -hmm. Look at that, 40% too with Smirnoff. So, I think that argument kind of holds no merit to the, this debate with the thing and alien cells. This guy says, XXX, thanks for playing. Terrible Kendrick song, highly don't recommend. This guy brought up the Blair Eraser, which I also dug into a bit when I saw it. I figured that that was put on screen for a reason. Uh, when Blair is looking at the, whenever he was looking at the dog thing, he has a pencil with an eraser that he's pointing at the features of the like a creature. And it looks like the eraser is getting really close to that thing. It's not though. If you go back and rewatch it, the eraser never touches anything. And I also would like to point out in this scene that it seems like John Carpenter made it very clear that although Blair has gloves and it's covered in blood, you will not find a single drop of blood on his actual hands or arms. It seems like he intentionally made it to where you saw the blood on his hands and would assume that he got it on himself, but there's no on-screen proof that Blair touched any of the organs and blood and visceral fluids from the thing. So, again, I don't think that's meant to be proof, but more of a red herring, because in the next scene that features the eraser, they also show the Smirnoff bottle in the background, same scene. Coincidence? I think not. On top of that, they show the gun, which he will eventually use in Buddy. probably the next scene or two. I'm sure you've seen the movie. I hope you've seen the movie. This guy says, I love you. I love you too. Chase is gonna hate me for that one. This person said that the thing could just infect everyone with my assumption by sneezing. And you do have a point. Yes, if McCready was the thing and he wanted to get everybody infected by the means that I portray, he just has to go in the room and be like, hey guys, how's, that? how's it going? And now everybody's infected. But this is a movie. Imagine if he did do that and that's how it ended. Like, what's compelling about that? It's stupid. It's a cop-out ending. It, it, the movie's meant to entertain and to also be compelling at the same time. It wasn't going to be... Uh, one and done, sneeze, it's a breeze, easy peas. No, it's going to be a whole obviously complicated, complex, paranoia-ridden movie. So I get the point. It is a, a logical point, but movies aren't always logical. This one brings up child's breath. Uh, there are a few comments that still brought up the whole child's breath theory. And if I were to go back to the HD one, which is what I'm going to do, I'm gonna show. Here's the HD version. You can now see Child's Breath. It, they upped the quality. It's, I mean, I don't think it's from 4K, but he got caught in 4K showing his breath. So if y'all were still disagreeing with my whole bending, still breathing conclusion, you're still wrong. Child's breath is there. So I, I don't know what to tell you. Gamer Vet calls me an asshole. Repeatedly, actually. Well, Gamer Vet, if you really are a veteran of gaming, I don't know what to tell you. I didn't know a video could hurt your feelings. And I apologize. I come off abrasive. I'm not really an abrasive person, maybe a little bit, I might be a little wee bit of an asshole, but I'm the funny kind of asshole. I'm the kind of asshole that is, is excused because I be funny, you know what I mean? Probably not. But I do apologize that I hurt your feelings and I will do better. Yeah. This guy said that he thinks I don't even play chess. I, I did play chess. I played chess quite often with my dad. He taught me when I was a little young chichen and uh, we played all the time. and. Uh, he used to beat me a lot, and now it's kind of 50-50, but I do know how to play chess. Uh, this guy brings up the earring, which is a reference to the prequel of the thing uh, that was in like 2011, I think. I'm not too sure about that. Don't quote me on that. 
Uh, but it has Ramona Flowers of, what's her name? Mary Elizabeth Oh, Winston. Mary, okay. Mary Elizabeth. Thanks, camera guy. But the whole earring thing is kind of thrown away because that was shoehorned in for the prequel. The original thing does not reference that at all, and I don't even think that was an idea that was taken into consideration. Here's a, a tough one that I, I think kind of irritates my soul a little bit. Uh, this guy said, or a lot of people actually said this, but Benning's left glove, but right hand. So Benning's grabs the bottle with the right, with his right hand and his right glove, but he pets the dog with his left hand. Well, you're really making me do this right now, and I'm kind of mad that you're making me do this because I did it in the first video. I slowed it down, but I'll slow it down even more so you can see the dog physically lick both gloves right here. Dang! See what you made me do? Yeah, now you look stupid. Nah, I'm kidding, I love you. I gotta work on my abrasiveness, sorry about that. Uh, Child's being dumb as a brick for drinking the bottle that McCready hands him. Like, if the thing does infect people and you can't trust anyone, why would he trust McCready at the end? I think it's more if he just accepted his fate and that he is about to be uh, unalived to death through freezing methods. And he probably doesn't care anymore. That's usually, I mean, I'm thinking that that's probably the way people are going to think before their demise is, you know, who cares about humanity? I ain't going to be a part of it anymore. So he said, I'm going to drink this bitch. This semi-juice, semi-sauce. Thanks for trying. These people are so petty towards you. I know. I, it's cool, though. It's funny. It's Welcome to the internet. So this guy said it all makes sense why he laughed at the end. Yeah, yes, I, I think it really does. And then the music cue that is also coincidentally correlated with it makes it even more revealing. Uh, this guy said Char Charles drinks the bottle because he's the thing and wouldn't do that normally. Who the f*** is Charles? You mean Childs? Yeah. Unless he's gonna die. Wants to feel drunk or some sense of, you know, pleasure before death. The alcoholic pleasure, not not any other kind. But then again, we don't see what happens after, so... Wouldn't that be a weird ending? <laughs> uh, this guy brought up the coats, and the coats is a thing that's been brought up a lot. But this theory was proven wrong when we got higher definition versions of the movie. We were finally able to see the real color of Child's jacket, and it is in fact the same one he has wore all along. A YouTube channel called Collative Learning actually mentions this in one of his videos. But thanks to the image enhancing Blu-ray format, which I had no access to six years ago when I made my previous video about the coat continuity, I recently discovered that Child's coat in the ending is in fact a dark coat that's finely covered in frost. And it was actually the orange firelight that made it look beige. I was a little disappointed in this because it was a really cool and groovy take on the ending, but it would be very disingenuous of me not to post an update. Coats have no actual standing or merit to any theory. It was random, on-screen error, just like the breath at the end. This guy brought up the Blair sound effect, and I think this is a great thing to bring up. I never noticed this before. Whenever you see Blair turn into the thing at the end and he grabs uh, Gary, you hear this music, this kind of springy doo -doo 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 -doo. And it's kind of like, I guess supposed to be Blair's theme music is what this guy is trying to say. And whenever Fuchs gets attacked and he sees the shadow walk by, the music that's played with that shadow is the same music that you hear when Blair attacks Gary. Who's that? So he's going, he, he's going in there and saying that, well, if the music was played for Blair here, then that means that it is Blair here, which I, that's pretty cool. I never noticed that before. That is a good point. And I will bring something up about that later. All right, now with that said, let's get to the points that require a lot of attention and a lot of debate. And again, I will be doing this in chapters. John Carpenter said, John Carpenter didn't, John Carpenter me, me, me. I'm being abrasive again, I'm sorry. Carpenter says a lot, all right? And he's also old, but I don't think that's an excuse. John Carpenter would be the one to know considering it is his movie, it was written his way. And John Carpenter has said a lot of things. He said some stuff in commentaries, which if you are an avid commentary watcher, you know a lot of these commentaries are not 100% true. 
A lot of the times they're just joking around while the movie's playing. A lot of the th things that are brought up too about John Carpenter saying this, saying that, is a whole bunch of evidence people are giving me, but I cannot find the evidence online. I have scrubbed the internet and I have looked. Maybe all these interviews that people are talking about are just lost to the algorithm. I don't know, I couldn't find it. And if you can find it, uh, go ahead and comment. I'm probably not gonna look at it, but comment anyway. I would love to accidentally run, run across that. People on the set that say John Carpenter said this or John Carpenter wanted this for this were wrong. For example, the lights guy was the one that brought up the theory of the glare in uh, Palmer's eyes and that became a huge thing everybody was talking about that that became like factual evidence and recently in an interview this interview to be specific uh, John Carpenter said that he is uh, I think quote-unquote full of shit All right, what's the quote as John Carpenter says the guy's name is Dean Cudney okay. doesn't know he has no idea. He puts the lights up. He puts the lights up and we were in the snow. He has no clue. You tell him that. Tell him he's full of <laughs> Savage. So that being said, John Carpenter thinks nobody knows who the thing is but him. And he does say later that uh, no one does know and he's not going to tell anyone. I think obviously because the new movie's under production. Or at least in the works. So the whole John Carpenter set thing, Nolan Void, sorry. The comic and the game. Yes, let me tell you. I have been getting comment after comment wrong. You're wrong. The game says you're wrong. The comic says you're wrong. And the comic is canon. The game says you're wrong. And the game is canon. Uh, John Carpenter endorsed both. Okay, so, let me, here. I bought the comic. Both of them. I, I have both right here. I also went ahead and bought... A lot of the other ones that really have nothing to do with the original story of McCready and Childs. But I read them, and they're good. They're not as good as the thing, but they are good. Uh, the comic was published in 1991 by Dark Horse Comics. The writing was by Chuck Farrer? Fair? I don't know how to pronounce that. I'll put the name right here. And the art is by Jen B. Higgins. And it is a very, very entertaining story. Sh is it was crazy, man. They even fight in a submarine. It's pretty cool. But, uh, spoiler alert, I'm gonna say this right now before anybody who hasn't read the comic is watching this. Childs dies at the end. He ends up, you know, taking one for the team. He blows himself up with everyone in the submarine to kill the thing right then and there. McCready gets out. He lands on an iceberg or a floating piece of ice and he freezes to death. That's the end. If he's the thing, just let me point that out because it is also put in the question in the comic if they know they are the thing or if they don't know they are the thing to my next point the comic is not canon yes it had the IP for the thing but so did the game and let me tell you if you played the game they both contradict each other both of these things that people are arguing that are canon are contradictions in and of themselves and they both have the IP and the rights to the thing just because it is IP doesn't mean it is John Carpenter canon. And of course he's going to endorse the project. He's probably getting a percentage of this. He's probably getting royalties from both of these medias. And come on, man, it's money. You know, you know, life. I bought the game, purchased it. Here it is right here for PC. Me and Caleb, who is the camera guy, I'm sure you've heard him talking before. Me and him streamed this game like three or four days and finished it. The thing, okay, so they aren't working together. Ah! Ah! Oh my ah! God! <laughs> what the fuck? And that video will be up as soon as it's done being edited and processed. But I'll put some clips here of this counterintuitive <laughs> game. It lets you save in mid-game, but when you start it over, it starts over from the beginning of the level, but there's a, a way around that that we just didn't get until, like, day three. I don't even know if he's doing damage to the <laughs> Bro, he just, like, hit me. Were you low? No. Quick, me. <laughs> We've been you doing this the wrong way the whole time, bro. The game brings some things into question 
that also seem to contradict the idea of the thing. One of the things being we found a note that states that the thing cannot just replicate organic things, but it can also replicate clothing, which makes no sense in the movie. We have the virus has the ability to replicate the original biological entity, including, including the, clothing. the clothing, which that opens a whole new can of worms. Yeah. But it also ends with McCready being in the helicopter and saving you. I got to see him use the the what was the gun called? Oh, yeah, the blood test kit. I need to see McCready take the blood test kit. Let's get to the main meat and potatoes here. My big uh, reveal. And this is the bombshell of this point here. In this interview, the game developer said that John Carpenter had no hand in the making of the game. He just had a cameo. So any idea that they had or uh, employed onto the game has no merit onto the movie or John Carpenter's take of the movie. That being said, I was there when John Carpenter revealed that there might be a thing too. Yeah, that's right. I'm from Texas. Yeehaw, boy. And let me tell you, I was at that convention. Here's a few pictures of me there. And let me tell you, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to hear that John Carpenter might be working on a sequel to The Thing. While I'm saying this, that also means that once the second movie comes out, if, if they answer, because there is a huge possibility they might not even answer the question. If they answer the question and McCready is the thing, you already know I'm about to post a video in this bit saying, hey, told you so. And if it turns out that McCready wasn't the thing, I will post a video saying I am sorry and I was wrong. But I'm still going to keep everything up because, I mean, why not? You don't have to watch it. But if the movie comes out and it is contradicting the game and comic that y'all hold so close to yourselves as canon. I want to see y'all commenting on these YouTube trailers. That's not canon, John Carpenter. The game is what's canon. The, the comics was canon. This is dumb. Why'd you do this? This movie is wrong. But you're not going to. We all know you're not going to. I'm not going to. So, that being said, all of this still holds merit in your opinion until a second movie comes out. My stuff is based off the first movie which was a single standalone movie that had no idea of having any sequels. Because The Thing, believe it or not, was a failure when it came out. It had to compete with Blade Runner and it lost, dramatically lost. And the only reason why The Thing became so popular was because people started watching it after and then it became a cult classic. Which, it's a great movie and it deserves to be a cult classic. It deserved not to fail, but they had no ambition of making a sequel to it. And as soon as it failed, they definitely didn't have any plans for it. It wasn't until it became very popular that they decided, hey, we might actually do a sequel to this. Let's see what we can do. Actually, let's make a dumb ass bullshit prequel. It's not that dumb, but it's... Let's do a prequel with nothing but CGI. Off that rant. Uh, all right, next chapter. Benning's not infected, but McCready is. Good point. I do like this argument. Let's get into this. This is a point that I overlooked, which I will admit, but... Here's where this becomes straight conjecture. People say that if McCready becomes the thing from drinking from the bottle, then why didn't Bennings become the thing and had to be assimilated in the storage room? I have three options for you here, and these are just the first three I could think of. One, Bennings may have drank from the bottle, but the saliva didn't make it to the tip yet. We see in the blood serum scene that the blood is able to move on its own. So who's to say the saliva can't move on its own? It just didn't get to the tip in time by the time Benning's drunk it. There's on-screen evidence to support that this is a thing that could happen. Number two, the thing does not know when others are the thing, which brings into question a whole bunch of other stuff. But this would mean that whenever the thing from the Norwegian camp saw Benning's, who was already in the process of being assimilated stealth style, it didn't know because the things can't communicate. They can only communicate, I guess, physically like us humans because we also are dumb. So they would have to tell each other, hey, don't fuck me up, man, I'm the thing. So he attacked Bennings, killed Bennings, who was the thing, and assimilated him. Or three, is that the gloves are also what saved Bennings. He touched the bottle with his gloves and then he probably took them off immediately after. Saliva, glove, bottle, McCready, mouth. Uh, I think it's it's more of the, the gloves were the proponent that kept the saliva from getting to the top. But again, these are all conjecture, uh, conjectures. Matt gets the bottle later, handles it without gloves, and that's when it happens. But who knows? Who really knows? We don't. I do. I, I know everything. The blood scene. 
Now this right here, like I said in the last video, is my biggest crux and it is an issue for my argument. It is, I know it is. I fight myself all the time over this. I lose sleep over this, I do. But again, there is no on-screen evidence that McCready cuts himself. I've seen people saying that there's a deleted scene where they show him, but there's a reason the scene was probably deleted and not implemented into the movie or the final cut. If John Carpenter wanted to prove the complete innocence of the main character, he would have left that in and not cut it out of the final cut. That being said, you really think John Carpenter just expects us to believe McCready is free and innocent just based off of the idea that he's the main character and the hero of the story? Not enough for me. I'm sorry. I, this movie's too deep for us to be like, yeah, McCready was clean the whole time, never able to turn. This scene alone is what causes a lot of holes for a lot of things. And let's say McCready didn't get the blood from the vault with the key. He could have gotten the blood from Fuchs after he killed him, who was human. So there were ways for him to get blood. The issue at hand is how did he get the blood to the Petri dish without showing the team? We don't know. There's no on-screen evidence. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, conjecture <laughs> and say no proof that he did, no proof that he didn't, can't prove me wrong, can't prove me right. So this is up in the air, but I, I, you can't say it's a debunk unless we see him cut himself and put the blood into the Petri dish. A lot of people say that because everybody was tied up, they all had their eyes on him, and he could have, there was no way he could have got away with it. But again, McCready had dynamite in his hand, and he had a flamethrower, he had full control of the situation. He really could have done anything he wanted, which is a, a point I will bring up in a later chapter. Fuchs seen and Blair too smart to drink the bottle. Why did McCready burn Fuchs and not assimilate him? Good question, because the way that McCready assimilates people is slow. And if he were to have assimilated Fuchs, Fuchs would have had plenty of time to tell everyone to not share food and not share drinks or cans. And that would have ruined McCready's plan, which is why he killed him in the first place. So he said, you know, sometimes you lure upon Sometimes you kill one, and that is exactly what he did. Can I say kill on YouTube? He unalived him, and that's exactly what he did. I'd also like to point out that they don't ever show McCready share the info he was given by Fuchs to the rest of the team. So we really have no on-screen proof that everyone else knows to not share food or drinks. But back to Fuchs. Uh, John Carpenter knows the principles of movie making. If a scene holds no value to the movie, you do not add it. And I think a lot of people who watch movies and are avid uh, movie fanatics know this. And when they have a movie that shows random scenes and that don't cut it, it's annoying. Uh, like probably a lot of my channel's videos. But let me show you this scene if we were to just to cut out the dialogue between McCready and Fuchs. Come up with anything yet? One or two ideas. All right. Who's that? Anybody see Fuchs? Didn't change the movie at all. Like, at all. They don't ever bring up the sharing food, sharing drinks thing again. Uh, McCready never talks about talking to Fuchs. He just says Fuchs went missing. And the movie would have went on the same as it would have. Why did they add this scene? I think you know why. You know why I know why. And for Blair being too smart to share food and drinks, I'm with you on this. Blair is a genius. Blair is intelligent. Why would he share food and share drinks with people if he's the one that thought of the idea and put it in his notes? Here's why. He was drunk. He was inebriated. Whenever McCready put him into the shed, if you couldn't tell by his slurring. And watch him close, do you hear me? Blair was drunk and having a manic episode. I think uh, the fundamentals of sharing food and drinks just went over his head at that point. And on top of that, he also trusted McCready. He tells McCready, don't trust Clark, watch Clark. I said, watch Clark. Why would he say that to someone he doesn't trust? So 
For McCready to grab his smear and off and drink it in front of him, for one, Blair probably didn't notice. And for second, even if he did notice, he'd trust McCready. McCready had that in the bag. But yeah, Blair is smart enough not to share food. We even see later down in the movie that he's eating out of a can because he also knows when he's sober. And I think he's the thing at this point, but that's conjecture also. McCready's behavior and the long con. Well, McCready is a, is, is a badass hero. Why would he just turn on his people? Okay, yes, McCready has his own personal quirks and McCready is a very hero-esque character. So why is he playing the long con? Well, because he is a thing and he has firsthand witnessed humans kill the thing and now is understanding how humans think and is using this whole information data log to further his plan. And his plan is continuously changing, but he does have a plan. It's McCready. He had a plan in your mind as a human, so he's going to have a plan as a thing. He figured, why kill everyone when I can assimilate everyone? It'll make it so much easier if a rescue team comes and all of us are working together and saying, yeah, I don't know what happened. We just found us at a Norwegian camp. Or if they came back and they were all things and grotesque monsters burnt up and now he has to explain that he's human even though his whole team turned into the thing and now they're going to quarantine him and he can't touch anyone and it'll be a whole hazmat situation it's hard to assimilate the world that way i think that's kind of an obvious answer here and yes mccready could have done so many things why didn't he turn into the thing when he was cornered he never truly was cornered he's a smart man he had dynamite when he was kicked out broke in grabbed the dynamite and said i'll blow this whole thing up dare me and the movie is meant to encourage paranoia not encourage fear so if McCready were to just turn into the thing and start killing people all nonchalantly throughout the movie, there is no paranoia involved to that. The idea is to make you wonder who is the thing, who's next, who's going to be it. If I haven't said this enough, it is a movie. They need to make it entertaining, compelling. You're going to have scenes that are illogical to a character you're watching just to push the plot further along and not rush the plot. That being said, McCready's diary. Another thing brought up. I didn't bring this up in my video because I figured that this was an easy thing to understand. I was wrong. I am sorry. I should have done it anyway. McCready's diary is nothing more than a man hedging his bets. This man is deciding, okay, my plan is starting to not work out. I'm tired of talking, Fix. I just want to get up to my shack and get drunk. I'm going to leave a voice diary here. So that way, if it gets to a point where we get saved before I can finish my plan, before it could get to him. You go inside, tell the others we found Fuchs. We'll be in as soon as we can. Where are we going? Up to my shack. What the hell for? Because when I left yesterday, I turned the lights off. It gets to a point where we get saved before I can finish my plan and the rescue team does believe people are turning into the thing. I'm going to say, I can't be the thing. If I was an alien, would I be talking to myself in a recording, you know, documenting all these things? No, I wouldn't. So I'm not an alien. See? Easy peasy. It's hedging his bets. If he were to get caught, he has this as proof that he's human. Also to the point of why he wouldn't torch the team when they were all tied up, because he could have. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. Imagine if it just ended with him killing everyone right there. No, it's, come on, guys. And again, why would McCready kill the thing at the end if he was the thing himself? Okay, so I also like to add on to this question of, of why didn't Blair kill McCready the same way he killed both Carrie and Nalls? Maybe because McCready isn't human. I mean, it, it would only make sense, if we're going off logic here, that he would have killed McCready while he was distracted too, like he did both Carrie and Nalls. But he doesn't. He decides to bring out the theatrics and show McCready, which again, it's the movie. This scene needed to happen because, you know, the wow factor. And it's the f***ing 80s. Woo! But you have this, this, like, conflict between two aliens. You have Blair, who has been killing off the humans. And then you have McCready, who's been killing off things. And killing off and, and taking the side of the humans in a way that Blair doesn't understand why. So when it would come down to these two parties, they're going to have an internal conflict of, Do I trust McCready? He's been killing us. And you have McCready, who's all like, Hey! I'm pretty smart. This guy's probably going to kill me because I've been killing his friends. 
So it, it was going to have to end with one of them living and one of them dying. They probably also had a conflict of interest with Blair obviously wanting to leave the planet. And I believe McCready wanted to stay and assimilate the entire world, which is why he played the long con. While we are on the subject of McCready's character, I would like to point out a commenter mentioned something that I felt really disappointed that I didn't catch. So let's go under the assumption that McCready is the thing and my theory is correct. Just you have to, you have to play along with me here. I know you don't agree with me, but if it is the case, the very next person that McCready tries to assimilate based off of that is Nalls. Whenever he tries to take him with him to go turn off a light that just so happened to be on in his shack. Well, it didn't occur to me that Nalls is the chef. So in this game of chess that McCready is playing, Nalls would be the ideal person to assimilate. If you turn Nalls into a thing, you have access to all food and drinks, which kind of is the centerpiece for my theory of Simi Juice. Given that information and my theory, it kind of all makes sense. The puzzle pieces are clicking. Unfortunately, uh, Nalls reacted the way he did and Nalls ruined the plan that McCready had, which had to set him into plan B of going psycho with a flamethrower. While we're on this subject matter, I challenge you with the question. While we're on the level of conjecture of what McCready would and wouldn't do, and y'all seem to be experts on McCready and know exactly what he's thinking, my question to you, why did McCready go to the lengths that he did to destroy the base and call it quits. And then when he comes face to face with Childs with no other imposing party to argue with him, why didn't he just kill Childs? Why does there need to be dialogue? If McCready is as badass as y'all claim he is and is willing to do anything for the sake of humanity, he would have killed Childs. This is the real question, because why is he playing a game with Childs? He knows what could happen if Childs is the thing. He knows what he's doing by sharing a drink with him. He knows that Childs could possibly just turn into the thing and kill him immediately with no one watching. Why? Why? Maybe because he wants to assimilate him slowly by handing him a J and B at the end, letting him put his nice bulging lips onto that sweet. Icy, I, I guess it would be icy because it's cold out there. Icy beverage of a J&B. I'm gonna have to quit my position after that one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I mean, we can't get married anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be moving out tomorrow. Take me with you. <laughs> so why, why would he even have this conversation with Childs? I think you know the answer and you know my answer to this. So this leads me to Childs. I cannot tell you whether or not Childs is the thing. He is off screen for like an hour of the movie. And in movie time, he's out for a long time while they're destroying the entire base. I cannot tell you because there's no on-screen evidence of Childs becoming the thing. After he does the blood serum test, he is human from that point and then he goes missing. I would like to reiterate that there is more on-screen evidence, on-screen evidence that McCready is the thing then there is on-screen evidence of Childs being the thing. Just keep that in mind. But I will say I don't know for sure if Childs is or isn't the thing because he could have ran into Blair outside or he could have just thought he saw Blair and was wandering out until he saw the explosions and started wandering back. Most of the pieces are there and it's up to you to really put them together however you want. Uh, this is a movie that is heavily theorized between Childs and McCready. Um, that being said, I do think that this idea, this comment, has probably the best ending that I think I could uh, agree with here. Sage Inc. says, The real twist is both were the thing. Re-listen to Mac and Child's convo at the end. Every piece slash cell has built-in self-preservation. Both Mac and Child's were skeptical of each other since they have a desire to protect their own lives. Child's thing doesn't trust Mac since Mac was killing them off the entire movie, and McCready's thing doesn't trust Child since he held back and didn't help assimilate the last humans. It's perfect. The humans didn't trust each other, and now the things don't trust each other. I love that. It gives me chills to just think that, you know, the human's paranoia has now rubbed off onto the thing and distrust is now something they have to deal with. Which leads me to my final point, it's still a theory. I, I know, I come off as, you know, standoffish with this argument, like I know everything, but if I'm going to stand on a controversial theory and a controversial opinion like this, I can't be a little bitch about it. You're not gonna take my word for it, you're not gonna listen to me. So I have to be upfront and be hard and stern on this. 
but it is still a theory and it has holes as do a lot of theories with the thing and i accept that but in my opinion mccready is still the thing and i put forth my evidence now you take it as you will and decide for yourself uh so i do think that the the thing has no answer it really doesn't i, I have an idea but it's not made that way so i think this comment summarizes the ending best and the overall theme of the cinematic masterpiece just some hooligan being a fooligan says this is the central dichotomy of the entire film not necessarily the open to interpretation ending it's often dismissed as but a distrust there isn't meant to be an answer it's not a puzzle to be solved that is the horror either way mac lost but the vicious cycle of life and death predator and prey friend or foe strong and weak the clever and the unfortunate and all their uncertainties are passed along to something that can survive. And I, I'm going to end it with that. Beautiful. Well said. I love it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I, I greatly appreciate it if you made it this far. Like and subscribe, obviously. I plan to upload more videos on this channel and be way more, co not common, active. Be way more active on this channel. Uh, I got some, some stuff coming, both with horror movies and some mysteries that I've been trying to answer. Shameless plug, I have a new song out now. You should go listen to it. It is on Spotify, Apple Music, link down below. If you want to take the time to support me, that's another way to do it. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one. This is not the life that I feel that I'm owed They said it wasn't fair but this shit isn't even close Tied to these demons they aren't even my own Decisions weren't mine to pick I've been tied to a stone just to be thrown overboard Not the throne I had in my